Hello everyone, today's video is all about uterine contractions. We're going to see what is a contraction and what can you do to recognize the true one, the one that are going to put you in to labor. Let's go into the video to know more. Hello future parents, welcome to my channel. If you're pregnant, I'm sure you ask yourself at least once, will I know when I'm in labor? Will I know when I'm having a contraction? Now that's a very respectful question to have, especially if it's your first baby. It's normal because you never had uterine contractions, so you don't know what they're gonna feel. I swear, you are going to know when you're having one. That being said, there are still a lot of things to know that will help you to differentiate real contraction from Braxtonics contractions and I'll tell you what I mean in this video. If you don't know me already, my name is Ilenia, I'm a midwife, I've been a midwife now for seven years and I love helping women during their pregnancy, birth and postpartum journey. So if you have not done so already, please subscribe to the channel to get more and more content about maternity, labor, pregnancy, breastfeeding, anything you like. I've already talked in previous videos about ways to recognize if you're in labor or not, but for sure having regular, consistent, painful uterine contractions is one of those signs of labor, like there's nothing wrong about it. However, we need to know how to differentiate these contractions so that you can, you can spend a bit more time at home if that's what you want to do, or you cannot panic once you start to having some of them. So the main difference is that I want to talk about in this video is the difference between Braxtonic contractions and labor contractions. I'm not going to go into details about the labor contraction in terms because just because they change during the labor phases, but I've done a full playlist about that, so please make sure to check it out where I explain you how the contractions are according to what phase you are. In this video, we're just going to differentiate these two broad and main contractions into these two groups. Your uterus is going to be this pink balloon in this video, is made by a bunch of muscle fibers. Outside pregnancy, in your normal life, a uterus is usually like the size of a fist of your hand, but it still is a muscle. So like other muscles in your body, it contracts and releases. It's not one of the muscles that you can control, unfortunately, so it will kind of contract itself according to some situations that I'm going to talk about or according to some hormones that I will explain about as well. So during the pregnancy, usually even after 20 weeks, it starts to practice these contractions and those practice contractions are called the Braxton X contractions. What are they? They're like tightenings of your belly that will happen in different parts of the uterus that are triggered by something. Usually maybe your baby has given you a kick or maybe you are dehydrated or maybe you've been laying in a position for a long time or maybe you've been on your feet for a long time and the uterus starts to kind of contract irregularly in different parts of the uterus like this. And therefore you feel like, hmm, my belly is getting hard, like I'm probably having a contraction. Yes, it's a Braxtonic contraction. What is, the, why we're not worried about them unless you have particular pregnancy conditions like placenta previa or polyadramnios, but even that usually they're quite Naive. It's because those uterine contractions, the Braxton X, don't change the status of your cervix. The cervix is this little cylinder at the bottom of your uterus that keeps the baby nice and tight inside during pregnancy and will, in order to let the baby come down and eventually be born, it needs to efface, getting flat, and then dilate. The Braxton X contraction don't do that. They don't change your cervix too much, if none. Therefore, they're not dangerous or they're not a reason to go to the hospital or they're not worrying. They're usually painless. Some women describe them as being uncomfortable, but most of the cases they're completely painless. And also a main big tips to differentiate them with uterine contraction is that they never evolve into anything else. They will usually fade or disappear if you correct one of these things that I was talking to you about before. For example, if you drink a lot of water, or if you go to the toilet to wee and empty your bladder, or if you change position, or if you get some rest, then usually those contractions will stop. They never evolve into something longer or closer, they never develop into a pattern that usually the labor contraction have instead. That's it about Braxtonic's contractions. Good that you have them, don't worry if you don't have them, doesn't mean that you're gonna go 45 weeks pregnant. Some women have them very early, some women don't have them at all, all fine. If they're not causing you any pain or any discomfort, just chill and ignore them.
Labor contractions, on the other hand, are quite different. As I was saying before, the uterus is made by muscle, muscle fibers, and these muscle fibers are receptive to a hormone called oxytocin. When your brain and your baby together, or together we don't know exactly for sure, start to produce oxytocin, those will be captured by the uterine muscle, and therefore it will automatically signal the muscle fibers to contract. The uterine muscle usually contracts in this way, it goes pulls the uterus up and then down and eventually will efface your cervix, dilate it and push the baby down and out. So already from the description you can understand that they're usually a little bit more painful and they get more painful as the labor progresses. Don't panic, don't worry, there are a lot of ways that you can do to cope with contractions so I will highly encourage you to take a prenatal class like some parenting classes because it will definitely help you to have some coping strategies to go through your labor. But in general, nature is good and it gives you time to cope with the idea that you're starting to labor, therefore those contractions will start to be 20-30 minutes apart and then it will slowly get closer in time until they get every three to five minutes or even every two when you're getting to the end of your labor. As they get closer, they will also get longer. So they will get from 30, 45 seconds up to 90 seconds. And as they become closer and longer, they become obviously a bit more uncomfortable. So they start to have a pattern. Imagine them like the waves at the beach. So you are on, on the shore and you are getting some waves that are and dipping your feet or your ankles and they're fine you are getting a little bit cold when they come but you're fine and then as the sea gets more and more wavy these waves are starting to hit you like a middle leg to your knee or to your thigh and then they just get you through your chest and then eventually they will completely put you underwater well don't panic as i said before there are so many strategies that you can use to cope with them one of the most things to remember though is that as a wave does the contraction will end so it starts builds up in intensity goes up as a peak and then it comes down and you're gonna be the one that will know how to ride them how to surf them and just wait for them to pass until the next one comes in terms of what you're gonna feel most of the women describe contractions as like period cramps at the beginning this is because the uterus is, is kept in the pelvis by some ligaments these ligaments are pulling like different parts of your abdomen and the lower cavity therefore you can have like a mirror feeling in your kidneys and on your back and now we slowly start to wrap around your abdomen like a belt some women instead never experience back pain contractions but they all, they all just describe them to be like at the top or in the front it really depends to conclude, I want to say that if you experience any of these symptoms like being like these cramping or tightenings being like labor contractions and you're not 37 weeks, please make sure that you call your provider, your midwife, your doctor or you go to the hospital because you might be starting to have something called preterm labor and we don't want to do that. We are going to try to do as much as we can to in order for you to prevent to go into labor before 37 weeks. So please always double check if you're not above 37 weeks that you're not having true labor contractions but just Braxtonese contractions. It's all for this video, I hope that you liked it, if you've not done so already please subscribe to the channel, I'll see you next video, bye bye!